All right, so what on earth is the tone curve? Well, this is a great question because in my opinion, inside a Lightroom, this is the only setting that one, looks pretty weird, uh, and two, it also like, it doesn't tell you what it does. What is a tone and why do I need to add curves to it? Well, today we're gonna be covering exactly that. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use the tone curve to better your images, what it does, how you can use it, the difference between the red, green, and blue ones and the RGB ones, the whole lot. We're gonna be diving into that today. So without further ado, let's dive into Lightroom and let's get this video started. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and I've got this photo here that I just recently shot in Jog Jakarta with my good friend Luca. I've just done a pretty simple edit on it. You can see before, after, it was pretty blue, it's pretty gloomy. And I've just added one of my presets from my master collection. If you wanna check that out, you can do so. First link in the description. Uh, but anyway, today is about tone curves, not about presets. So we're gonna come down here to the tone curve and I'm gonna reset this. I thought I already did. Well, I'm just being caught out. But anyway, this is what we're gonna be starting with here. So this is what a tone curve is gonna look like. It's just a straight line. Now you've got five different options. You have this one here where you can actually adjust the settings like manually like this with sliders. You then have more or less the same thing without the sliders. This is what I personally use and this is what we'll be working with today. And then you have red, green and blue sliders as well. So. Let's dive in. First of all, what is the tone curve? Well, the tone curve pretty much is a way you can control contrast, light and exposure a lot more, I guess you, you have a lot more control and you can do a lot more finer detail things with it in comparison to using the basic panel here. If we have a look at the basic panel, we can adjust the exposure. That's pretty simple. That's something you can't really do in the tone curve, just raise it. Uh, I mean, you could, but it, you might as well just use the exposure here. You have then have the contrast slider, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now you can control all of this in the tone curve, but you can also control the mid-tones in the tone curve, which is something for some reason you can't do in the basic panel. But anyway, you can in the tone curve, so we're in luck. All right, let's dive in to the tone curve down here. So first of all, just to let you know, we're gonna be editing with this one, not the one with the sliders, just the RGB tone tone curve here. And this is going to be controlling contrast and exposure and light and all things. But if we're going to be, and we will be diving into the red, green and blue ones, this has nothing to do with light and just to do with color. So I know I said this is RGB. For some reason, they call it RGB. Maybe I'm missing something, but this controls con contrast and exposure. The other ones control color. So keep that in mind. All right. So first of all, Let's, let's dive in. All right, so the tone curve is split up into five sections. You have the blacks down here and you have the whites up here. You then have at this cross section here, you have the shadows, you then have the midtones and the highlights. Now, usually what I do is I place these three points so then I have a total of five points that I can work with. And you can also see in the background here, the histogram of the image, which is just gonna match up here. So you can kind of get an idea. This shot is a lot heavier on the darker side. So as you can see, the shadows are, are much higher than the highlights are, but you can also see that nothing is clipping, which is really important. So as you can see here on the, uh, on the dark side here, we have nothing touching this area. And then we also have nothing touching the highlight area either. So we're in luck. This image was shot pretty well. You can also see that up here. All right, so first things first, what do I do and how do I use the tone curve? Well, first thing is, is I like to add some solid contrast into my shot. I know you might be looking at this image and saying, well, hey, it's already pretty contrasty and it is, but I'm gonna show you how to make sure you're not clipping and I'm gonna make sure to show you how you can kind of do it tastefully. So you've probably heard in the past, or maybe not, um, the, turn, the, the term S-curve. And this is what I use in a whole lot of my photos. I think arguably this is the best way to add a lot more punch into your images. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's making a very slight S. It's not making a complete S, but it's a very, very slight S, of course, depending on what shot you have. And keep in mind that you don't wanna make huge changes to the tone curve. If we do, things get out of hand real quick. So this is just something that you wanna slightly be touching and you don't wanna be going crazy with it whatsoever. It's gonna completely ruin your shot. As you can see here, even just raising the shadows just a little bit like that, we've now got this weird gray fog going on. You don't wanna do it. You do wanna just make slight, small touches. And of course, this is gonna depend on your image. But anyway, let's dive into an S-curve. So right here, we're gonna, we're gonna be controlling the shadows here. We're gonna be dropping the shadows just a little bit. And then we're gonna be increasing the midtones, which is like I said, something you can't really do in the basic panel. And then we're also gonna be increasing the highlights. And this is gonna spread out our histogram just a little bit, which is great, which means we're adding more contrast. And to be honest with you, I think I might lean just a little bit higher onto the midtones and the highlights here, make it a little bit brighter, just like that. 
I think this is looking good. Now instantly we can see just by toggling this little switch, we can turn it off and turn it on. So in instantly we've got a whole lot more punch back into our image, which is great. This is really, really good to make sure your images are coming out rich, rich, crispy, dialed in, I like it. Okay, so the other thing that I usually find myself doing is this sort of curve, but there's two other variations that I use all the time. So if I'm happy with this, I'll be like, cool, move on, time to go. If not, I will come into here, I'll come down to the blacks and I will raise the blacks ever so slightly. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna put a beautiful, nice, cinematic, matte, faded black look to your shot. And I really like this effect. Of course, once again, it all depends on what you're shooting, what your style is and how you're shooting it. And it also depends how much you need to lift the blacks. Cause as you can see, you lift them just a little bit more and things start to get out of hand. So you don't wanna push it too far. And as you can see, if we turn this off and back on, there's just a nice subtle little fade. And I like that. I think it looks great. So I either do that or and or I should say, because sometimes we're gonna leave this up just a little bit. I like it. I think the, the moody mistiness in the background, um, it kind of complements this faded look to the whole image. So we're gonna lean into that. So another way that I personally like to use the tone curve, this is probably the third way I do. Um, I will move these shadows up just a little bit. We're gonna keep that contrast there. But then if I want an extra contrast and rich shot, I'll make another point here and then drop this even further. Now this image probably doesn't need it because it's already pretty contrasty, which is great. But for some images, especially depending on what light you shot in, you may need to add back quite a lot of contrast. Now, as you can see in the histogram up here, you can see that things are very contrasty. We've got quite a lot happening in the highlights, quite a lot happening in the shadows and nothing really happening in the middle here, which is great. I love a good contra contrasty punchy shot. And once again, we're probably going to just be increasing the highlights and the midtones here if we wanted to add this one, but I'm going to delete that one there. We're going to bring this back here and then we might bring these down just a touch. And I think things are looking very nice. So once again, we're going to turn this off and then we're going to turn it back on. And I like the look of it. Maybe, just maybe, we might lift up the shadows just a little bit to make it not as contrasty. But I mean, if we have a look at the before and the after, I think things are looking great. All right, so that is the main tone curve out of the way. And to be honest with you, this is where my tone curve usually stops. I don't really use the red, green, or blue tone curves at all. And that's purely for the fact that I like playing with the colors inside of the HSL sliders and the color grading tab. But with that said, let's dive into the red, green, and blue slide, uh, blue tone curves so I can show you exactly how they work. So like I said, this really doesn't affect light. And as you can see, it just affects color. The exposure of the image stays exactly the same. And you can see that more or less with the histogram up there. Sure, the colors are changing, but nothing's really happening to the exposure. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to place three dots and you can do this for each individual color. And what you're gonna be doing here is it's actually a really good representation of what's happening. We've got the reds up here and the blues down here. So for example, if I got the, uh, the shadows here and I brought them down, I'm adding blue into my shot and I'm taking away red, vice versa. If I push up the shadows here, I'm adding red into the shadows and taking away blue. And that's pretty much how that works. And it works exactly the same for the green and blue curves. And what this is, in my opinion, is just a nice way that you can kind of color grade your image but I just don't vibe it. I much prefer using the HSL sliders and the color grading, like I just said before. But if you do wanna play around with this, this is personally how I would like to play around with it and how I have played around with it in the past. I make very, very subtle changes to the tone curve. So for example, we're just gonna make a nice little S curve here. Just like that. And now things are looking a little bit so-so, but then what you wanna do is you wanna more or less do it to every other uh, color as well and more or less exactly the same curve just like this will be a little bit high things are still looking uh, there are right now and then we're just going to add a little bit of a little bit of juice here and there we go well maybe a little higher so sure, we do have quite a nice little color grade here, but to be honest with you, I much prefer doing this down here. And as you can see, I already have for this image. But if we turn all the tone curves off and back on, we're actually getting a pretty solid upgrade, a pretty solid looking image. And I think this is banging. But anyway, that is more or less the tone curve in a nutshell. I, uh, I sure I could go a little deeper into things, um, but I don't think I need to. And especially if you were sitting here and you haven't really used the tone curve in the past, then I think this is solid. Like this is really all you need to know. You've got your blacks 
your shadows, your midtones, your highlights, and your whites. And that's how you can control them. Like I said, don't push things around too far because as you can see, things get out of hand pretty quickly. I don't know what that change is. And I don't know any other tool in Lightroom where you can make the change, but hey, the tone curve is really powerful. And as you can see here, it's a really cool tool. But anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you've learned something, let me know what it was down below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. Like the video while you're at it. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.